Welcome to a Capital Hungry webinar and presentation on understanding the Russia and Ukraine tensions and also the more macro scope of market impacts and what we can see going forward in terms of market impact and how to play that accordingly. Why is Russia so interested in Ukraine? First of all, you have to have a little bit of background information. From a geographic standpoint, you can see that Ukraine is really just a little piece hanging off of Russia. Well, prior to the 1990s, the Soviet Union, which was known as Mother Russia, was all one large country, which included Ukraine. And from a historical standpoint, there has always been a need for the people of Mother Russia, even during the times of Joseph Stalin, where there was always this need and urge to eradicate those who were of Ukrainian ethnicity. We can see this during the 1932 and 1933 famine that hit the Soviet Union, where the majority of people that were killed were of Ukrainian ethnicity in that region. There's always been this need of power control and further influence of Russia on a global and Euro scale historically and even to this day. And it's always been to promote this image of mother Russia. And at the end of the day, Putin, Vladimir Putin was raised during this Cold War era with a very similar mentality of supporting mother Russia in this dictator style type of mentality. But with this case specifically during the Vladimir Putin era, he has been trying to extend power into Ukraine since 2014. Even if you were to watch or read interviews of Putin discussing Ukraine, he doesn't even acknowledge it as an individual country. He still sees it as a part of Mother Russia and the Soviet Union and Russia overall, even though Ukrainians members and residents of actual Ukraine see it as the complete opposite. So you can see the difference in mentality. This isn't just to extend power and move into Ukraine. That has been something that's been going on historically and has been ongoing. This is also to induce global conflict and push the USA and other Euro regions, uh, NATO regions, NATO, into intervening. In my opinion, Ukraine is being used as a distraction as China and Russia have been digging their hands into Iran, Afghanistan, and other Asian as well as African re regions gaining more resources and power. Now, Russia and China are going into these various Asian and African regions that are still developing and providing them and providing them various resources and money to fuel their project and infrastructure development in exchange for land access to ports, resources from that land, and whatever else may be. Pretty much having economic takeovers. The presidents of Russia and China, as we reported, met today and reaffirmed their desire to have closer ties. The meeting comes as Russian troops continue to mass on the border with Ukraine. China and Russia have also been very well known for supporting enemies of America and of these various other Euro regions. Russia and China do not want the USA gaining more power. They do not want just the USA and these various Euro regions controlling the globe and controlling the global economies. This has been proven time and time again with the historical conflicts between Soviet Union and, um, and the US in the 40s and 50s. This has been proven with uh, trade wars between China and the US. This has been proven with historically the Russia has always been seen and China have always been seen as enemies to patriotism and the freedom of the US. And this goes vice versa. From the majority of our standpoints being in North America, we're always going to see it as the US is the good one and China and Russia are the bad guys. But if we were in China or Russia and born from there and looking from that perspective, we might see it completely different. But at the end of the day, that 
conflict has always been there, right? This has been proven uh, with the ally of Iran and China supporting Iran during the USA oil sanctions and the military escalations of 2018 and 2020. And at the end of the day, China and Russia could dominate most parties involved in actual military conflict, okay? It's very interesting, in my opinion, how as over the course of the round last six years, as China and Russia have been hoarding more resources and gaining more power really in the background, and the US has been involved in more global conflicts and overall has been losing power on the global scale, that now all of a sudden they're having so much attention on these Ukraine issues, but these Ukraine issues have been going on for a long period of time. So in my opinion, Ukraine is really being used as a stepping stone and I'm going to talk about that why. But overall, for those of you who want to understand why is Russia so interested in Ukraine, it's the control, it's the power, it's to bring back and restore Mother Russia, and it's for those historical reasons stated, and also from a geographical standpoint. Ukraine, the stepping stone. It looks like, in my opinion, Russia is using invading Ukraine as a stepping stone into further escalating conflict into, with destabilizing Eurozone regions and the USA with the help of China and other parties. This is a win-win situation for Russia as they can claim Ukraine, have the support of China, and go after the USA on various ends. It has always been very clear that China and Russia want to dethrone the petrodollar, remove the US dollar as a global business currency, and outside of an economic perspective, as China and Russia follow the dictator government style and how they run their um, and how they run their countries, they have never truly valued American cultures on a macro scale, right? American cultures, ethics, and values. Russia and China have always been on the opposite end of the coin there. So what we can also see is over the last recent years and historically, China and Russia have been helping American enemies and especially in recent years during the economic drama. Well, that has been very well known between China and the US during Trump trade war era, right? So it's been very well known, like I said earlier, the drama and issues historically between Russia and the US, which of course is gonna be including all of US's allies. It's been very well known, the economic drama between China and the US. But even now in recent times here, discussing specifically the Ukrainian tensions, you can see U.S. and uh, U.S. is still very against how Russia and China are working together. So February 11th, just over the weekend here, you can see senior U.S. administration official says the Russia and China are working to undermine the U.S. They're working together. Now, what we can also see is the senior U.S. administration official says that the partnership between Russia and China is a fundamental alignment right well what does that tell you that tells you that this this whole situation is bigger than ukraine itself china doesn't give a shit about ukraine china doesn't really care too much about actually invading ukraine or russia taking over ukraine but china supports what russia is doing because they have fundamental core values and core goals that are aligned China and Russia are on the same page. What page is that? Potentially dethroning and destabilizing the USA from a potential physical war standpoint or an economic standpoint and doing the same to these other Euro regions or at least making them more dependent on China and Russia, right? You can also see this where the president of China showed that they are in full support of what Putin is doing. Senior U.S. administration official says that the meeting between President Xi, the president of China, and Vladimir Putin says that their partnership statement shows Beijing, which is just representing uh, China, sees Moscow's Ukraine moves as legitimate. Right? It's very interesting because you can see how they're the enemies. They're on the opposite end of the coin. 
they're not our enemies, but to the U.S. You know what I mean? We're we're neutral. We're just here to observe the market moves. I could really care less unless we get bombed, and obviously, shit's over anyways. <laughs> but it's very interesting how we've been observing headlines over the last course of the week, and what we've been seeing is all of the NATO regions. We can see how they've been against Putin wanting to invade further in Ukraine. They're saying no, don't do that. Let's try to find a middle ground. Don't go into this military conflict. What you're doing is wrong. They've been threatening him on various economic fronts. Of we will sanction Russia on these various ends. We will stop you from extending your Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Your Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Sorry, right? We will stop all of that. What you're doing is wrong. Don't do this. And those countries, obviously, the allies of the U.S., the U.S. itself. Biden was saying we're gonna try our best to stop this from happening. But you see China now. China's like, you know what? What what Russia wants to do with Ukraine, perfectly legitimate, perfectly fine. We support it, and we also are fundamentally aligned with Russia's overall goals. Very interesting, right? So that's why it adds to my theory of Ukraine being used in this current time as a stepping stone, especially with the amount of power and resources. China and Russia have been collecting and growing over the course of the last years, and this is just some examples of headlines over the last years of how China and Russia support the enemies of America, how they how they have been developing their resources and power over um, from pretty much I'd say 2016 to this current year, and obviously from a historical standpoint. But I'm just talking about in more relevance to current issues. So you can see, even though America, the U.S., was sanctioning Iranian oil, China was still increasing purchases of Iranian oil and still hoarding Iranian oil and keeping it on their ports, allowing Iran to still develop their economy and still generate that revenue. You can also see many times when there was all this tension in the Middle East and very vulnerable. Russia and China would still come in to build up this、uh, very tense Iran in an alliance to destroy the U.S.-led order. Right? A quick guide to the U.S. and China trade war. We saw those tensions going on between Trump and obviously the China as he was trying to bring more money back to the U.S. via tariffs, and China wanted to keep everything status quo. Because the U.S. has major dependencies on China in that import and export, the recent Afghan issues, when the Taliban took over Afghan and U.S. basically abandoned it, well, guess who's been working with the Taliban for a new rule in a new era in Afghanistan? Russia, China, taking control of those resources, tools, power, and so forth, territory, right? What China and Russia? This is just an example of China is really up to in Africa. Go look at the economic takeover that Russia and China have been doing in developing African regions, taking control of various shipping ports,、um, land that's very resource rich in minerals and other natural resources that can be used in manufacturing, industry, and overall development of economies and so forth. Right? It's a whole economic takeover. This has been going on. Over the course of the last five to six years, at a much faster rate. Yes, China and Russia have always been growing and have always been、um, uh, have always been global powerhouses during our lifetimes. But over the last five to seven years, there's been an exponential increase in everything these countries have been doing, from their development to their mil from their infrastructure and country development internally. To their military development and weapons development, to their economic development, to their hoarding and purchasing of investments and asset classes and so forth, which is what are, which is what we are going to be getting into now. So, why? What is the benefit for China and Russia working together? What is the benefit for Ukraine? Ukraine getting taken over by Russia. What is the benefit of China partner partnering with Russia? And the impacts it can have on the market. Why? What are the reasons why? Well, overall, we understand war is very profitable and has very specific market impacts. This conflict and rising conflict can yield a lot of benefits for Russia and China. 
including more physical territory, resources, and as well as gold and oil prices increasing more and more. Remember, Russia and China have been hoarding up oil on their ports and Russia already has huge oil reserves for a period of years now. Not just oil, gold. Russia and China have been exponentially increasing their gold reserves. We know during times of fear, uncertainty and doubt, especially during times of global war tensions, gold explodes in value as a risk hedge. Oil explodes in value due to the uncertainty of the supply and the increase of demand in fueling these potential wars as well, right? So this both benefits Russia and China. China, you can see here on this chart, China's gold reserves, it was very flatlined in their monthly and yearly increases of gold reserves and gold purchases up until 2015, where China and Russia both, if you look at the Russia gold reserves chart, exponentially started increasing purchases and have kept on that same rate since to this current day, having thousands of tons and tons of gold just hoarded, ready, that's been increasing in value over the course of that last six years conveniently as well, right? Oil, huge ties to Russia's economy. The price of oil and Russia's economy have an opposite relationship. When oil prices drop, Russia suffers greatly. Oil and grass are responsible for more than 60% of Russia's export and provide more than 30% contributing factor to the country's GDP. The effect of the 2014 oil price collapse, which we've seen on our US oil charts, right, had a major impact on Russia's economy and was fast and devastating. Between June and December 2014, the Russian ruble declined in value by 60%. At the beginning of 2015, Russia, along with the neighboring Ukraine, had the lowest purchasing power parity relative to the US of any country in the world. This declining PPP lowers the living standards, goods purchases, home currency, and pretty much shows that the country's in the shitter, right? So pretty much what you can see is that when there is lower prices at the pump and oil prices are lower, this is, this is not a benefit for Russia. It's a benefit for potentially Americans in the US, but it's not a benefit for Russia. So what you can take away from that is that higher oil prices is great for Russia. We have oil prices going up to $100 a barrel. Putin himself said prior to this Ukrainian drama, he sees oil going to $100 a barrel plus. And of course, the war tensions can explode oil on a trend to $120 a barrel, which is a positive factor for both China that's been hoarding tons and tons of oil and has tons and tons of oil as well as gold and same thing for russia in terms of their economic impact the market impacts for us well because the ukraine tensions are potentially going to be just a stepping stone and we're going to be having these global parties getting involved if the nato regions further get involved and we actually have physical conflict then you're going to see china start to back up russia America start to back up Ukraine. The other parties get involved. It can become a much bigger conflict than just Russia and Ukraine itself. Russia and Ukraine itself is like the trigger. It's the starting point, but it can extend a lot larger than that, which is really gonna have the market impact. So we can expect to see gold more bullish, which would benefit China and Russia greatly in terms of wealth extension. Oil, of course, would be more bullish on the war tensions. US dollar, Japanese yen, and Swiss franc would be more bullish as safe haven currencies. Global equities on top of central banks transitioning into rate hike mode and the fear of war and conflict would also be a scare factor for investors, meaning higher chance of seeing equities weaker and the potential basket of risk currencies weaker against safe havens.